Welcome back. Now the 2024 general elections are the inaugural edition where independent candidates can compete for seats in both the National Assembly and Provincial Legislature. One of those uh, candidates is Zaki Ahmad, who is a renowned activist for his advocacy in various social justice causes, notably HIV and AIDS awareness and access to treatment, which has garnered him international acclaim. He joins me now to offer us more insight into his campaign and the position he finds himself in as an independent candidate. Thank you so much for your time, Zaki. Zaki, would I be correct in saying that you've always been in the political landscape? Uh, Zinati, thank you. Um, you know, this morning I was walking, going out with my colleagues and the song went into my head, the Abba song, Mamma Mia, here I go yeah. again. <laughs> you know, yes, I have been an activist for almost 48 years. Yeah. Um, and I think it's uh, been a, a time where I've really found myself learning more than anything else. And uh, being an activist since 1976 has meant that I lived through uh, Foster, Huerta, De Klerk, Mandela, Mbeki, Mutlanke, and uh, now Ramaphosa presidencies and I can, and prime ministerships, and I can identify the dramatic changes that happened in 1994, mm. when we had probably for the 94 to 99 period, one of the best parliaments in the world, mm. where MP invited communities in, where MPs listened to people, where MPs uh, not only listened to people, but called experts, progressive experts, to deal with very complex questions. So, yes, I've seen all of it, and I've done work with parliaments, mm. but really, I love being on the streets. Ah. Um, and in the... Uh, and in the and in a workshop environment where I learn and I help other people learn. That's my best. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, I was about to ask, I mean, what motivated you to go uh, the, the solo route uh, rather than being part of a party? But also, I guess, also on top of that, do you think that the landscape is ripe for voter demand for independent candidates at this point? Look, I think if we look globally, Representative democracy is in very, very deep crisis, and so is political party representation. Across many of the old established so-called democracies like Britain, you have a 12% trust in political parties. And in most countries, you have fewer than 40, uh, fewer than 60% uh, of the people electing who is in power. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at our country, whether it's the DA in the Western Cape or whether it's the ANC nationally, they rule with a mandate of less than one third of the electorate in that particular area. So it puts us in a position where, and when I say us, I mean all of us, mm. it puts us in a position where we have to say what has happened to political parties. Political parties have ossified and they're more interested in who's going to be in which position at what particular time. They're much more interested in writing a lot of promises which they break as quickly as the ink has dried on the piece of paper. And so people are quite fed up of that. I still believe that political parties have a serious role to play, but my role is different. I want to bring people into politics, and I believe that an independent candidate it's not a panacea because you can have bad independent candidates mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. What you need is if you're a progressive independent candidate, your duty is to have a direct connection with the people who vote you into power. And you're above all, you have to stand by the constitution. So there are two things only that even in political parties, I believe should be important to members of parliament. And that is being directly accountable to a constituency and placing the constitution above all else before your political party. Mm. And unfortunately, we don't have that in our politics generally and more specifically at national level. Mm. Talking about that, that direct connection with voters, I want to talk about uh, voter education here. Um, is there enough of an effort being made uh, to educate voters on, 
the options that there are there, including for independent candidates, or do you think that you're just having I to do a lot of the, the really, really hard work to get there? I think one of the, you've touched on what is one of the most important obstacles for an independent candidate now. And I can talk to you about some of the obstacles I faced and will yeah. continue to face. Yeah. But at the moment, the biggest one is the absence of a sustained education program by the IEC on radio stations on a regular basis on television state, uh, stations explaining to people you are now going to have three ballots one for province on which individuals and parties can stand and two for national one where you can vote only for parties which is called compensatory seats and the other way you can vote on what is called the regional two national parliament but there you have two uh you have both in the individuals independents and you have parties on that list i found that in a, in a meeting I had last last week with people at the universities and so on, they didn't understand it. Yeah. The only the only people who really have understood it so far is in the communities where I'm organizing, which is Elsie's River, Langa, Gogolet, Nyanga, and so on. But my campaign is still reaching a fraction of those communities. And the IEC, I don't think, has sufficient budget to do this. But Parliament has voted in a piece of legislation which has serious budgetary implications and then cut the IEC's budget. So that's a huge obstacle for educating voters. Yeah. Is and that that's a huge obstacle for people like me. Yeah, Zach, like you're talking about budgets because, of course, we know that, you know, to campaign, you need a lot of resources, financial resources as well. Uh, <laughs> how is that looking like? Because uh, obviously, a part, you know, political parties have more uh, access to that. And do you also have access to one of the funds that are administered by the IEC? Uh, if you're unrepresented, you do not yet have access yeah. to the multi party democracy fund, okay. or the, now the, the political fund. Once you're represented, you do get ex access to it once you're elected. Mm. Now, much more important is the fact that, you know, I have I help found my vote counts. Because in politics now, it is one rand, one vote with political parties. So if you give 10 around, you're going to get 10% of your, uh, less than 10% of your attention. Yeah. If you give a, a thousand rand, you're going to get a thousand uh, percent of uh, their time. Um, and I'm, my maths is bad because I went to a college school in, <laughs> and I packed it, so forgive me. Uh, um, but you know what I mean? The ability of politics to be influenced by big money is huge. And that doesn't mean I haven't got money from big people. I've gotten yeah. money from Feinbos Equity, from Michel Leroux. Um, I've gotten money from individual donors who've given me a million rand and so on. Mm. But the total amount that I need to spend to get elected is what the big political parties spend. So, because first there's economies of scale and then you know, business uh, date and i'd like to speak to you about my understanding of economics and the failures of the of the political parties in this regard yeah i have to raise 18 million rand to be effective in the next two months i have to raise three to four million rand in in order to run an effective campaign to get elected mm. over the last year we have spent about, I would say, close to eight million rand. Maybe, maybe, maybe six between six and eight million rand. My funders are declared on my website. I don't legally have to declare yet because the law hasn't been signed into into um, by the president yet and hasn't come into effect. But the political, uh, the amendments to the political party uh, funding is actually quite unacceptable in that it requires me to put money that is given to my campaign mm -hmm. into a personal bank account. Whereas I believe, like I have now, I have an NPC registered, which has oversight. Mm. And it's separated from my personal bank account. So there are many difficulties that arise. First, having to raise as much money as a political party. Yeah. And because you're contesting not one, you're contesting all the political parties. Mm. Um, 
Zaki, let's let's talk about uh, you spoke about the economics of it all. Yeah. Let's talk about the failures, the most pressing failures that you are trying to come in um, as right. an independent ca uh, candidate to say that I will actually try and change this or turn this around. All right. The first thing I believe all of us need to do, whether you're in a small political party or a big political party, is we have to commit to fix the state. That makes, means fixing ESCOM, fixing PRASA, fixing, fixing SASA, fixing municipalities, and so on. Now, I can't do that on my own. What is critical is that we bring the voices of people into parliament to address that question, but more importantly, that all the people who believe in the rule of law, anti-corruption, must stand together to fix the state. Because without that, the promises of eradicating poverty and inequality in one generation, the promises of four and a half million jobs created by the private sector, the promises of two and a half million jobs, uh, a, a job in every household, mm -hmm. all those things are a pipe dream unless we commit to fixing water, electricity, uh, commuter rail services, municipalities, all these things. And there's a clear division of labor in parliament among all those people who wish to fix it, to work together, to promote the good civil servants, to expose those who cannot do their work, and to expose and ensure that the corrupt ones are prosecuted. Mm. And that for me f falls under bracket fix our state. That's one problem in not being able to grow employment in our country. But the bigger one is that people don't pay attention to what is happening globally in the economy. We are the, we are the period now when oil prices can inc increase very drastically if Ukraine continues bombing Russia's refineries, for example. That itself will push food, as, food prices higher, transport costs, and so on. That's out of our control, completely out of our control. Similarly, the, the genocide perpetrated on the people in Palestine is also having an economic impact. It's also having an impact on insecurity in the world. The financial flows, the debt globally, our corporate debt, our household debt, all these things are not properly considered when in fact people make political promises on growing jobs and growing the economy. What we should be facing is say, these are the hard truths. Economically, we can only start working if we fix the state. Mm -hmm. Now, the Harvard study showed the following. It showed that spatial injustice had the biggest impact on inequality. But one of the things, two of the things it didn't mention, which Charles Simpkins, uh, he's late now, he was an economist in the 70s and right, right through until fairly recently. But in the 70s, he wrote, we have structural unemployment in South Africa. And structural, uh, that was influenced by two things. Hmm. One, an education system that was preparing people to be unskilled laborers. I.e., we weren't preparing, and now we aren't preparing people to deal with artificial intelligence, roboticization, and, and the dramatic changes that are going to take place in your lifetime and even in mine. Mm -hmm. The other side of it is that if the education wasn't working, the cheap labor system wasn't allowing the market, the internal market to grow. And that is still true. And, and we need to have honest debates about that, about income security, a universal income grant. As an MP, I can only help the debate. Mm -hmm. I can also access information for people. Mm -hmm. I can also encourage other portfolio committees, I want to serve on SCOPA. Yeah. I really want to serve on SCOPA. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure the ANC will try to keep me off it. But, uh, you know, one never knows. Maybe they'll have a change of heart. Yeah. Well, Zaki, we are going to be watching this very, very closely. Of course, very important uh, election there uh, that is allowing uh, independent candidates to contest the elections. Of Three course, votes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for also educating us. That was independent candidate for the 2024 general elections, Zaki Ahmad.